Hello and welcome. This is going to be Clock Tower Game Studios' very first YouTube video. Today I have the pleasure of talking about Anvil Industries' Daughters of the Burning Rose and their Kickstarter product. This product is now up for official retail sale on their site, which we'll be including the links to in the description below. Over the development of our game Seer, which I'll be talking to in more detail about at the end of the video, uh, I've had the pleasure of working with Joel and the other guys over at Anvil Industries, uh, mostly in use of their Exo Lords line of models which you'll see a picture of here in a minute. And speaking of the Exo Lords, Anvil Industries has just updated that line and launched the pre-order on their website. Uh, they should be shipping out before the uh, middle of the month, and those are available now at anvilindustries.co.uk. The links for that will be in the description below. And before we really dig in, I'd like to emphasize that this is not a sponsored video. Anvil in no way paid us, no funds exchanged hands, and I backed this Kickstarter of my own free will out of pocket. So here you can see that this came with bases, which is nice. Uh, they're not always supplied with all models, and I know Anvil Industries in particular on their website, when you're buying their um, custom ranges like the Daughters and others, such as the Exo Lords, that you actually get to select whether or not you're buying bases, which is kind of nice. I do believe they're included for free, however, which is also a good deal. One of the reasons I say that Anvil Industries ranges are so perfect for our game Seer is that they're completely modular and very easy to magnetize, as I'll show here in a little bit. But what that means is that as you create your roster, you also create a faction, you get to pick out rules, and then when you're actually creating the roster from the rules and the gear you've opened up to your list, you're able to go through and select, you know, all kinds of different gear, and it can change basically every time you sit down to play the game. And these models are perfect for that. So as you can see as the video plays, these models are broken down into their components, including the shoulder pads, the heads, and in some cases even the individual hands. Uh, one of the things that I like most about the way that they've done this is the two-handed ranged weapons, which they have basically the same set of poses for every ranged weapon, and they fit together with this slot and tab. And I'll show that in better detail in a later part of the video. But this all means that these models can be uh, intermixed with other ranges very easily. Okay, now that we've got everything mostly pulled out of the box, we're going to just start breaking things down bit by bit as we go through, and we're just going to cover everything in a little more detail than we have here. Let's get to it. Alright, first up, uh, as I try and fiddle with the little bag here, I've got, uh, looks like a set of arms, looks like the uh, weapons arms for the uh, melee weapons and pistols. Those come on a separate sprue. But here you can see what I was talking about earlier, how they've got the nice dimpled connection point for the wrists. You can also see at the right angles there how they've got a little like, almost like a peg fitting that goes into a hole in the shoulder of the torso parts. And we'll show that in a little more detail at another time when I'm breaking down and showing you how to magnetize these models. The amount of detail on these is fantastic, and there you can see that the uh, arms there that I just picked up, those are uh, shield arms, they've got a nice little peg hole on the flat spot on them there is a nice connection point so you can glue in your shields. Alright, and next up I believe in this pack we have uh, power plants, heads, bodies, and uh, we're going to start I believe with some power plants there. Now everything I ordered from the Kickstarter was out of the Renaissance stylized stuff, which has kind of a steampunk vibe to it, and uh, the armor looks a little more accurate for that time frame as well, the uh, Renaissance era. And here you can see the helmets. Now one of the things that I do note is that they have six helmets per squad of five, so you kind of get a variety to choose from. And I noticed on the actual helmet heads, they've got a visor that's uh, up on one of them so you can see the face. And there in the corner of the screen you can see some of these models put together and I used kind of a mix of parts between two different styles of legs and the uh, different hair heads and helmet heads. And these torsos are the one different part I ordered which are the Florida de Lee because I bought these to kind of replace some other companies models that uh, recently have been re-released so I liked this style in particular. And there you can see on the side of the torso the uh, hole I was talking about where the arm slides into and here you can get an idea for it and like I was saying this makes this super easy to magnetize like you can see there in the top right 
and swap in and out between the different styles of arms. And I will be making a video about how to do that explicitly, uh, hopefully in the next two weeks. Which brings me to a good point to talk about my intended release schedule for videos, which currently I'm planning for the first and third Mondays of every month. And now we're off to the next package of models, which is the Tower Warden Inquisitor here in front of us, and another one we'll get to in a second. So I noticed that the Tower Warden Inquisitor isn't available through their website right now. It apparently was a Kickstarter exclusive, which I didn't expect. But it's an awesome model. It's one of the few male models in this range. I'm pretty sure it's the only one, actually, maybe other than some of the uh, automated guys. But the level of detail on that thing, especially with the gas mask and the hat, it's just fantastic. Now, this is the actual Kickstarter exclusive they announced, which is Inquisitor Marshall Salas. I'm probably butchering that because it's French, but, you know... Now, she came with a couple different head options, one with a bare head with hair, which the sides of her head are shaved, and then another helmeted option. I didn't like the helmeted as much on this one. It was one of the gladiator-style ones, but I love that model. The giant warhammer, just, I love it. All right, here we have the Demon Hunter, which is another awesome character model. So here you can see she's got the helmeted head, and then that item there in the middle of the sprue that I do a really poor job of getting into focus on either video you can see here is actually a demon's head lantern that she's holding in her offhand there down low. And again, just look at the detail on this model. The fur aligning on the back of the hood and the cloak. Just fantastic. Alright, so now we're going to dig into the next pack. I'm hoping this is part one of a four-part series where we go through the whole process of... Uh, Unboxing, getting these models built, and then getting them ready for the tabletop and uh, sear, and then especially getting the game in. So here's what I was talking about earlier. I got uh, the crossbow option for the ranged weapons. You can see some of them put together there in the top right of your screen. All right, next up we have some tabarded legs, and you can see that these are the advancing options for the uh, kind of Renaissance style ones. They've got the cloth bits hanging down the front and back, and then they've got the hip plates on them. So you can see here, this is uh, an interesting thing that they do with some of their models over at Anvil. They include scenery debris as the sprue. And those little scenic bits are pretty awesome because you can use them for all kinds of stuff like basing or diorama building, terrain, anything like that. Here you can see the dimples in the top of the waists. And when you trim down the post from the uh, sprue of the torsos, they slot right down in there. And that's another point you could magnetize them on. And these are, uh, like I said, those were the uh, tabarded legs, and there's a bunch of different styles available. You can get, like, these ones where they're the Renaissance legs with the uh, armored uh, sabatons and everything that are running. And uh, you can also get, like, a flying version, and those are pretty cool, too, because you get jetpacks and everything. Now, earlier I mentioned the shield arms. Well, here are the actual shields. This is just one of, I think, three options they have. They have plain ones, and then they have some more sci-fi looking ones. And of course, these are the more stylized fantasy ones. And right there by my thumb, you can see the uh, daughter's emblem on that shield. I really like the way these have all the character in them. Very cool. Next up, we've got, I think, just a couple remaining arms and uh, another set of the legs. Although I think this set of legs is different. That's one of the tabarded ones. You can kind of see a little bit of the flash from the mold on that one, but definitely not as bad as other models I've seen. And here you have the arms, and there, as you can see, where I'm trying to point out, those are um, the tabs I was mentioning and how they slot into the weapon. And that makes those really interchangeable. They're a little bit thin to magnetize, but I found it easy to just magnetize both shoulders. And here we have sharpshooters, which are a separate character kit. There's two different poses. Uh, they do use the same firearm, like the same system for the uh, slot and tab, so you could potentially switch those out with different weapons. But here we have the Lord Abbas model. She's another character that I really enjoy because she's got the giant hammer. Like I said earlier, I'm a sucker for a good war hammer, and it's awesome to find specific character models that have that sort of design direction where they have the giant warhammer like that. And I really like the little details like the uh, embellishments on the cloak and then the gym studying and such on the head of the warhammer. 
And here we have Lightning Mage version 1. Now, there's apparently a second version of this model out with a different sculpt and posing that's available on the uh, retail site currently. And I personally prefer this one. They're both really cool, but I like the posing on that one. And next up, we have what is our last model in the unboxing video. This is Death. This is a very cool model. It comes in a couple different parts, and it ends up being four or five parts tall, where it's it's a really tall model. It's got a fantastic looking size. I love the use of negative space where the head should be. It's just an empty cowl, and some of that's also done with the sleeves to a degree, and it just makes for a really dynamic, really interesting model. I'm really looking forward to seeing that one painted up. All right, that pretty well brings us the, to the end of the unboxing portion of the video. From here in, it's just some housekeeping stuff and sort of an introduction. So this is, like I said, going to be part one of a three or four part series. Next part will be building and magnetizing these fantastic models. So be sure to come back and check out our video in a couple weeks when we update with the magnetization and building of these lovely models. So as stated earlier, that's going to be our planned video schedule is first and third Mondays every month. Other things on the to-do list include creating a Patreon. Right now we're just hammering out what the different reward tiers are going to be. So other than that, just the standard stuff, you know, give us a like, subscribe, comment, hit that bell notification so you can see when our next videos come up. Also be sure to check us out on Instagram and Facebook. Instagram gets daily updates and Facebook is where we make all of our big announcements. And finally, I'd like to give a shout out to some other YouTubers that have helped to make all this possible, at least from my standpoint. Luke at Luke's APS, Mel the Terrain Tutor, Jeremy at Black Magic Craft, and Scotty the Miniac. All those guys have been fantastic inspiration. Also, I'd like to give a shout out to Tabletop Witchcraft and Frankie D. Crafter. There are a couple other smaller tabletop crafting channels I've been watching recently and are really entertaining. And both those guys are really cool and you should check them out. Anyhow, I hope you've enjoyed the video. And remember, at the clock tower, it's always game time.